All righty. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to TowerCoverage.com presentation and Q&A webinar. This is the webinar for the basics or the beginner. Uh, we are going to discuss quite a bit about TowerCoverage.com, uh, but the big thing is we're going to take questions and we're going to answer those questions as well. Uh, as well. So let's get started. So the very first thing is, is what is TowerCoverage.com? How does it work? And then, of course, at the end, we're going to do our Q&A. So what is TowerCoverage.com? Well, the simplest definition is it is a radio frequency mapping application. We can build coverage maps based on virtually any RF system out there. We have some common radio systems, but we have a radio system so that you can sit there and put in common radio systems. So if you use Cambium uh, 450 products or Ubiquiti products, you can configure those as such so that you do not have to keep typing in all the system parameters under normal operation. We can also create link path analysis between two points, taking into account land clutter data, uh, as well as creating link, link groups to view your backhaul infrastructure. One of the big features that a lot of people do not realize that we do is we do website integration. We actually provide you with a simple iframe code, and that iframe code allows you to simply take that code, plop it in on your website, and immediately start getting data and end-user submissions from your website. You would not believe how many times people have said, well, I didn't know your system could do that. We've had this feature for, an, I think, a number of years, and that feature, the end-user submission feature, is probably one of the most powerful features of our application. I highly recommend everybody to take a look at that uh, in this uh, system. But we also provide a simple, easy to way, uh, easy to use method for people to sign up for your service on your website. We also, though, have a full API system. We can push the EUS end user submissions into your billing platform, usually within minutes. But we also have an API method to enter data on your website. You can use our EUS uh, API to integrate your website uh, even more, uh, uh, well, your programmers can actually take your website and build a form and actually submit that to us through the EUS API. So those pieces of information are there, but we do have a full API system available as well. So now we're going to get into how to use TowerCoverage.com. Well, the very beginning is your dashboard. This is your dashboard whenever you first log in. So whenever you first log in, we have uh, multi-maps, we have sites, we have coverages, links, link groups, and radio systems. But we also have the dashboard button right here at the top, as well as the new button, which is to use to create new items. We also have a search field right here. This search field, uh, if you click on sites or multi-coverages or link groups, you can search by any variable that you wish to in there. We also have the recent, which is the last 10 most recent items that you've updated. And that gives you instant access to the uh, items that you are processing or that you're currently working on. Up in the right corner, we have our My Account page. This is the My Account button right here. I'm going to actually highlight this here. Try to here. There we go. My Account right up there. That My Account page is very important because inside your My Account, you actually have land cover settings, you have your antenna patterns, we have our overlays, and then we have our users and our API settings. All of this information is very important. You also have the ability to upload your logo here. You also have the ability to uh, set your default list counts, manage your subscription, and see invoices as needed. So I know some people need invoices uh, to have those, you can actually click on payment details and it'll actually give you invoices uh, as you're billed for those. So going forward here, we have our land cover settings. Our land cover settings are probably one of the biggest features uh, or one of the biggest things that people need to make sure you adjust. Inside your land cover, you have a number of different options. You have wooded grassland, you have woodland, you have mixed forest, needly forest, uh, broadly forest and urban uh, low and urban high. Depending on your area, your urban high could be set to 12 or 22 or 40 meters, which is very high. That's a, that's a multi-story building. But in many cases, roads can be classified as urban high, 
And some urban areas are classified as urban high. So what you really need to do is you need to go in there and set the height and the density to what you think it is for your area. That will then take into account all of your land cover correctly. It's very important that you do that because if you do not, uh, especially with your uh, needle leaf, really these, uh, well, the first, besides water, pretty much the first six here, uh, your forest and your woodland, uh, all needs to be set to your average height for those types of, uh, of uh, coverage. And then also the big one here is the urban low and urban high. You really need to set those so that you have those correctly. All right. We then have our user section. Our user section has the ability to create users. Uh, you can add a username, password. Uh, user, username is always a uh, uh, email address and set the password. You can set those to input only or you can set them to read only so they cannot make any changes. And that's in your user section as well. Next, we have our upload KML overlays. This is our overlay management page. You can upload any KML, must be under three meg in size, uh, to our system. And that would be available for viewing on top of our multi-maps. We'll show you that a little bit later on, but any uh, KML can be uploaded as long as it's under those three megs. Uh, you can upload them here, you can click new overlay, and you can also test your overlays to make sure they work right here uh, in your overlay management. We also have antenna pattern uploads. Now we do try to bring all of the antenna patterns that most commonly are used. Uh, however, we do not modify our antenna files that we get from manufacturers. We only get those from the manufacturer's reps themselves. We cannot have you as a, as a tire coverage user submit us and say, hey, this is a Cambium or this is a Ubiquiti antenna file. We need to make sure we get them directly from the manufacturer. However, you can upload your own antenna patterns simply by clicking new antenna pattern and uploading a .ant file. There are a number of checks that must be accomplished or must be completed in order for these files to upload correctly. We will tell you what the problem is, et cetera, upon upload. Uh, once they are uploaded, then you can use that file however you wish. However, whenever you create a new antenna pattern, there's actually an, a beam width filter. And the beam width filter is very important because we actually use that on our EUS submissions. So imagine you have a sector facing due north, and let's say that sector is 90 degrees. So that means 45 degrees plus 10 degrees, so it's actually 50 degrees. Once the customer is outside of that 50 degree beam width, they are not considered for that sector. Okay, and this is for your EUS emission. So whenever you are trying to find locations, we want them to be within our antenna pattern. We want them to be within our beam width filter. And again, we add uh, 10 degrees onto that, so basically five degrees on either end, but if it's at 50, 52, 53 degrees, and that's where the customer's off, then that sector will be excluded from our EUS submission. So it's very, very important that you put a, cor uh, a correct BEMA filter in on this. So next we're gonna go to sites. Uh, sites are your GPS location of your towers. You can also search via Google Maps to drop a pin on a location. You can specify the default height, and we do have a bulk upload via CSV file. There is a template file in there uh, as well. So here we have the new sites button. Very simple to use. We try to make it pretty simple. You're going to use you're going to use your sites. Once you're done with your sites, then we're going to go to coverages. And then once you're done with coverages, you're going to go to multi-map. That's typically how it works. We also have an additional step called radio system, which we'll cover here in a minute as well. So under our new site, we have the ability to set a site name. We can set a longitude and latitude either via decimal method or degrees, minutes, seconds. It's totally up to you. It'll convert to the uh, decimal version. You can also click a location on your map, and that will update your longitude latitude for you. You also have the ability to uh, add a description and group number or group uh, field if you wish, and we specify the default height. Now, the default height is kind of a, an interesting thing. We do store the default height for the site. However, on all of your coverages, you could modify that. So if you have sectors that are at 150 foot versus 180 foot, uh, you can modify that. But this would be the default height by whenever you select the site, 
that is automatically put in. We also have our import sites via CSV, and you can download the template for importing those sites as well right here. So next we're going to go to radio system. And I know I'm kind of skipping around here, but the radio system is used in a way to take common values across multiple coverages. Again, if you're a Ubiquity shop or a Cambium shop, a Microtep shop, it doesn't really matter. What the whole ideal here is that you're going to put a common radio system. So let's say you use four 90-degree sectors. Well, you can specify which antennas you use, your transmit power, your uh, typical receive gain, your typical average height above, uh, above the uh, terrain for your receiving system. That way you can make a consistent radio system across all of your... Uh, uh, all of your coverages. You can also create coverages very quickly by using radio systems. So here we're going to hit new and then we're going to hit radio system. Very simple to use a radio system. When we get to our radio system page, as everybody refreshes here, we have we have to create a system name, pretty simple, but then we also have to specify transmitter site information. So this is going to be our sector antenna or our omni, whatever antennas uh, that we have, what is our uh, bearing or our zenith of our antenna. This is actually very common that uh, you may have to change that because you may have a sector facing northeast, southeast, or maybe due north, due east, etc. Your antenna tilt, this is always specified in a negative number. If you put a positive number in there, that's actually up tilt. Okay, so if you have two degrees mechanical down tilt, you would put that in there. If the antenna actually has electrical down tilt, that should be taken into account in the antenna pattern file, and you do not need to put an antenna tilt in there. Your gain, frequency, your transmit power, your average line loss. We also have our receiving station, our average client height. So around here, we have about two stories, so we usually sit there and say about 20 feet. Now, you can specify that in meters or feet. It's totally up to you. But that's what we normally do. If you're in an area where you have lots and lots of uh, single-family homes that are one story, then you may put 10 or 12 feet in there. Your average client gain. This is actually kind of a, a, an issue that we get from time to time. Um, your average client gain. This really should be the largest antenna that you would typically put on a client. Uh, we typically use up to 25 dB, uh, the LHGs, so we use 25 dB as our gain. Um, your results may vary. It's totally up to you. Something else that I have seen people do is they've put in uh, the client gain of their SM plus their client gain of their reflector. So if you use reflectors, you would actually have to add those two together and put that in your client gain. But let's say the reflector adds 10 dB of loss. Well, what you can do here is you can set your strong signal margin to 10 dB. Now, what does that actually do? Well, the RX threshold is the minimum signal to see in your coverage map. So if we say neg 70, that's what we get. However, the strong signal margin, if it is 10 dB, that means from 60 dB and greater, we would have a light green shading and between 60 and 70 dB, we would have a dark green shading. Now that's important because again, if you have your, uh, uh, if you have your sectors running and you have your clients uh, that use those reflectors that are 10 dB, you know that in the light green area, you do not need the 10 dB. You do not need the, uh, uh, the reflector. But in the dark green area, you do need the reflector, okay? You also can specify your max range as well as your rendering quality if you're going to use land cover or not or if you wish to create a view shed. And this is all in our radio system as well. Now, even though we use a radio system, that does not necessarily mean that you have to use all those variables. The radio system is just a common radio system that you'll use based on your coverage map. So you'll actually take your actual coverage and you'll select a radio system and then you can modify any of these variables as you wish to. So keep that in mind as well. So one of our core features is coverages. Um, it is based on typically each sector or an antenna on top of a tower per frequency. So each coverage is a per frequency map. Uh, you will need a uh, coverage based on each sector antenna and frequency to create those coverages. Okay. Um, 
once you select your antenna pattern, uh, once you select your antenna pattern, you keep in mind you can get those from your manufacturers, or you could get those from other locations. That's uh, about uh, everything in there. To create a new coverage, you're going to hit New and then Coverages. Pretty straightforward and simple. So once you get your new coverages, now we're inside our new coverage map. So inside our new coverage, we have a radio system. Now this is up to you. You do not have to use a radio system. Okay. With that said, you have a radio system that you could use. So by you selecting a radio system, it will fill in the blanks for everything else besides the tower site, the map name, and the default antenna height. However, if you do not wish to, uh, or if you wish to use an antenna system, you still have to fill out your site name, you have to select your site, and then how high is your uh, antenna. By default, by you selecting your tower site here, you will uh, automatically fill in your antenna height. Note that you can modify that as needed. All righty. Next, we have our receiving station. Again, this I was kind of covered inside our uh, radio system. But with this, the, this is the max values for the radio system, uh, the receiving station. Uh, it is stored by coverage by coverage basis, so you can modify this however you wish to on your coverage. Our transmitter information, again, all this information is stored by the coverage, even though you've selected or may have selected a radio system. Keep in mind, down tilt is negative value for down tilt. Uh, the exact center frequency, this is actually used in our frequency usage planning tool, which I'll show you in our multi-map section. Um, but this was where you would actually enter the exact center channel that you're actually using. We also have our performance here. Uh, again, we have options for using land cover. We have options for your maximum range. We also have options to create a view shed. Now, we have some people that ask me, what is create view shed? Create view shed actually takes all of your land cover settings based on your land cover and makes the density the maximum value. So in other words, no signal is going to pass through a tree. It's, it's like a brick wall for those signals. So the example would be is if you have your uh, view shed, what you're doing is if you're using land cover, you're using land cover and you will see uh, a view shed go over the, the customers and you'll see uh, uh, a shadow from uh, the radio systems uh, by using those view sheds. So once you create a coverage, you're going to have a coverage similar to this, uh, etc. Very straightforward and simple. So next we're going to talk about links. Uh, we're going to hit new and then links here. And what a link is, is it's just for a point-to-point -point RF link. Pretty straightforward, pretty, uh, pretty easy, pretty uh, simple to use. So inside here we create a new link. We can use a radio system. We have to select two different sites, and uh, we have to select the antenna height. We have to select our frequency, and then our basic system performance variables here. Note that there's no antenna in here, and this is because uh, we assume that you're using an antenna that has a direct line of sight and has uh, correct alignment. So it's very, very important here. So here you can use a radio system. You do need to give it a link name, create your two heights. And then you need to fill out the information, the transmitting and receiving information. Very simple, very easy to use. Once you've done that, then all of a sudden you're going to get your link path here. You're going to see it on the map. You're going to see a uh, terrain profile of that link. You're going to have tilt and gain, or I'm sorry, your tilt and azimuth uh, on both sides so that you know how to point and which direction to point your antennas. You also get your signal and your signal margin as well as your distance all inside here. We also have a couple extra little features. Remember whenever I said that you could go to your system uh, under my account, you could upload a link logo. Well, if you do that, whenever you click print link here, it will actually use that logo to create a nice printable version of your link path profile. We also, on Tier 3 and higher, have Google Earth Flyby. What this does is this allows you to download a KML and do a flyby of your link path profile uh, in Google Earth. Now, we did that because Google Earth does have some tree data, but not a whole lot. But they also have building data, but not a whole lot. 
in some cases, this is uh, useful to see. Uh, maybe you have a link that's shooting through a building or something. But in other cases, uh, it would not show anything more than what we already have. So the ideal here is that they are uh, uh, all available. Uh, tier 3 and uh, higher accounts uh, is where the Google Earth flyby is. All right. So next is a link group. A link group is just a collection of links, and we can select a color for that. So we basically create a new link group. We give it a link group name. We give it a line color, and then we can select any of our links that we just created uh, to show on our multi-map. I will show you where that is uh, when we get to our multi-map section, which is pretty uh, pretty quickly here. And here's a Wi-Fi network one, uh, line color blue. You have different link groups uh, as well. So multi-maps is where really where the heart of our site is. You use them to show you where you cover. Uh, the update page will give you a iframe code that allows you to do your website integration. It also allows you to uh, also allows you to add uh, view your link groups, view EUS frequency groups, uh, possible towers from the ASR overlays. All that kind of good stuff is all done on your multi maps. Alrighty. So to create a new multi map, you click new multi map. Pretty straightforward. We give it a name. We have options for place pins on sites, which places pins for any coverages that you have uh, that's inside that site. Uh, EUS data collection form. This enables the EUS feature on this map. Make this map publicly viewable. This allows your map to go into our publicly viewable database uh, along with your contact information. So you create a new map name. You select your coverages. Pretty straightforward you get a multi-map here. Inside your multi-map, you have a number of features on the right side. Uh, I'm sorry, on the left side. Over there, you have radar. This is our local radar. It will show you a local radar where you're at. It will show you uh, what's going on. It will loop uh, as well. So you do have that option. You have v view EUS data. The view EUS data allows you to take any of your end user submissions that submitted, your, uh, submitted to your website through our system and it will allow you to view them literally on top of your coverage map. So this allows you to, you can actually select one of these and view the EUS data if you wish to. But the big thing here is like right down here, notice we have a whole big cluster of customers. Well, that big cluster is possibly where you could possibly put new towers. So this is a, a really good way of actually viewing where customers are requesting service from and where they need to get service. We have our view link group feature. This is that link group feature we looked at earlier. You can select uh, your link groups, view your links, and then you can click on one of these links, and then it'll give you the path profile, your distance, your performance characteristics, et cetera, uh, inside that link path profile. Our overlays are to view overlays that we have. Uh, we do have a number of publicly available overlays, but you can upload your own through your My Account page. This is our overlay map, the U.S. County lines. Uh, this goes, gives you that map uh, as well. We then also have our frequency usage. Now, this uses several different things. It uses the exact center frequency, the direction of the sector, the beam width, plus your distance field. And what it does is it draws where your antennas are pointing. It draws them out to the max distance. And it gives uh, a shading for each color, uh, for each different uh, 20 dB, or I'm sorry, 20 uh, uh, megahertz spectrum. So the example here is here's a 2-4 spectrum. We have two overlapping channels. Uh, notice here that we have some overlap because our sectors are not facing the correct direction. So we do have some overlap that could potentially be uh, your interference in 2-4. So that is uh, another feature, and you can use that for 5.3, 5.2, 5 5 5.1, 3.6.5. All those frequencies are available as well. Our ASR overlay. This is actually a new feature that we launched uh, uh, just a while back. What this is, this is the antenna structure registration database from the FCC. What that is, is that is the uh, uh, antenna structures that are registered with the FCC. We download that data 
on a weekly basis. We download the entire database and re-import it into our system. So here you go. Here's some of the ASRs in our area. We give you the height of the structure and the registration number with a URL. Now, why is that URL important? Because if you click on it, it goes to the FCC page for that ASR registration number. It actually gives you all their contact information, who owns it, uh, et cetera. So this is an American Tower uh, tower. But that all that information is available to you inside your multi-map while you're viewing your coverage. All right. We also have a path analysis. So you can click anywhere on the map, and it'll place a pin there. Uh, you may need to zoom in. You can enter a location. You can enter a GPS uh, location up there as well. But once you place that pin, you can click Path Analysis. And that will open up a new window, and it will give you the six best tower sites for that coverage or for that point. It will tell you if they can get a good link, if they cannot, etc. And it opens up a new page for you as well. So next we have our update button. So up here we have uh, our multi-map. We have our update button, which allows us to access to change our multi-map. But it also gives us access to our iframe code. Very important. You also have other options, delete, duplicate, order your shapefile, form 477 from this multi-map as well up here. If you click the update button, you will get this page. And this is the public multi-map, which options you can turn on and off. But the big thing here is it gives you your iframe code. This iframe code allows you to directly integrate the EUS data, either a multi-map or a iframe code, directly into your website very quickly and effectively. Some people do not wish to get uh, or to have customers see their coverage area. We understand that there are options in your EUS settings, which we're going to cover here in a bit, that will prevent them from seeing a map. However, the default with EUS data collection off is a map. And that's going to be something similar to this page here. And if I full screen it here, uh, it will be something similar to this. This is with the iframe code with the EUS off. It gives you an address search. It gives you your coverage area, et cetera, all centered, all good. All righty? So with that said, now you have your iframe. But let's say you want to iframe, uh, but you wish to have the iframe on. So let's turn that iframe on. Immediately, all you have to do is refresh that page, and you would get the iframe code. And this basically says to fill out your current coverage, fill out our form. You must fill out all the red boxes. You must uh, answer your recaptcha, which is a Google-based recaptcha. By submitting this form, they actually uh, we actually geolocate. We actually search for the city, search for the street address, etc. And we actually geolocate that. And then we say, move this pin to your exact location and click on where you wish to have service. Now, you can sit there and, and analyze this, but we all know geolocation is not perfect. That's why we get this page. So in this particular case, the geolocation is actually here, but the actual service address is actually here. Because of that, we have the ability so that the customer can click right here and move their pin. Boom, now their pin is moved. So now we have the exact GPS location of where the client is. And that's very important. They click finish. And now we have all kinds of new options that we're going to cover next in our EUS data. So our EUS options and our EUS data gives us a new searchable interface, uh, gives us uh, the ability to search for no-gos. These are customers that did not have signal before. Uh, ability to reprocess on any multi-map. You can update records and make notes in the uh, EUS entry. Uh, and you have the EUS settings tab in your My Account. So let's go there first. So in the EUS settings, we have a number of options. So we have EUS landing. So this is after they've filled out the form, what do they do? Well, by default, we display a coverage map zoomed in. But we don't have to. We can redirect them. We can uh, uh, give them a message. We can give them a URL that says, here's where uh, we want you to go. Uh, we, maybe the, you want them to go to the, your thanks page. That's perfectly fine. The movable pin text. So if I go back here, notice we have this movable pin to move this pin to the exact location. That actually has the ability to be changed. You can specify that right here. And then you can also specify multiple emails uh, to get the EUS email settings or EUS uh, submission emails. 
we also have EUS text. So we have different titles, but we also have city, state, zip code, all this kind of good stuff. And you can actually change this text to whatever you want. This actually allows for us to uh, do an easy language change so that you can type it in if you need a different language uh, for your system. We also have the EUS API. and This allows you to uh, specify which API you wish to use. So if you're going to use VISP or Power Code, et cetera, and then you have to have and define the API key, username, and password. Now, the EUS API is a push API. What that means is that means we actually, sum, uh, once we get the data, we generate your six best tower sites, we then submit that to your billing platform. Uh, depending on which one that is, it may or may not have a URL field here. Uh, if you're using Power Code, every Power Code is different, so you'll use a URL. If you use VISP, they have a central URL, so we don't display that. Uh, we also have any documentation that we get from those vendors we get in place right there. You also have the test API in EUS push details. Uh, the example of this is this gives you the, uh, is it a success? Is it a duplicate request? Uh, is it a failure? So that whenever you're doing your programming, you have the ability to uh, do your end user submission or do your EUS testing. We also have your Google Analytics. Uh, there are plenty of people that use Google Analytics. Uh, you can enter your Google Analytics ID, and then the EUS page will be Google Analytics uh, enabled for that ID number. All righty, so now we're going to go to EUS data. Notice we have a number of different options here. We have recent, all, new EUSs, installed, no service, or serviceable. All of these are just different options inside of EUS, and you can change those however you wish. I'm going to go into the recent one, and inside our recent, we get all of our most recent uh, submissions. So notice these were a couple days ago. You also can access your search name, so you can save your search. You can access any of your saved searches. Uh, tier 3 accounts are above. You can download your CSV file, and this will give you your uh, all your customer data that you've collected on our system. Or you can delete them as well. It's totally up to you. By clicking on a name, you actually get the link path analysis for them and the six best closest towers. You also have the ability to change their status. Is this a new EUS, which means typically they have not been touched? Is the customer serviceable, but they didn't want service? Is the customer uh, no service, or are they installed? You also have the ability to edit and reprocess here by uh, editing and reprocessing their information. And you can also resend their EUS feature, uh, which is the email that we generate. Now, we do have some new features with our beta site. One of the new features is the ability to do reverse path lookups. And what this is, this allows you to create a, uh, let's say you have a cluster of no-gos and you have isolated them inside a save search. Uh, in our beta site, you can actually say, hey, I'm going to build a new tower or I want to search based on the AOS, ASR database. And it will actually do a reverse path calculation and sit there and tell you where is the best place to put up a tower. So in this particular case, any of these red areas would get me uh, almost 100 to 90% reached if I put a tower there. All right. Now, that's a new feature in our beta system, but I want to make sure that that's coming, uh, make sure that you guys can actually use that, uh, et cetera. But it is coming uh, to our production site very shortly. So for those of you that don't know, we do have uh, Form 477 orders. Uh, you can click Orders and click New Orders here. By that, it will take you to your uh, Google Earth shapefile uh, if you want that, your fixed broadband deployment data. This is the one that we primarily do, and then the fixed broadband subscription data. Um, it's very important. The broadband deployment data is actually where you actually cover, where you can actually deploy service. Uh, there are about 22.8 or so million uh, census blocks inside the U.S. We do actually give discounts for bulk purchases of these. Just contact support at towercoverage.com. Um, usually, if you use our online system, it will be uh, usually fulfilled within four hours. Uh, you'll get an email, and then you'll go back to uh, uh, completed orders and click on your order there. And once you go back to your completed orders, you should uh, be able to, to view those and download that. Um, note that you cannot change anything while that's processing. Uh, we need to kind of fix that, but 
that is a new feature, uh, a feature that you can do as well. This does give you the polygon shape files, which can be used in your uh, Google Earth. It also gives you a GeoJSON file, uh, and it gives you a listing of all census blocks that you have coverage in or a portion of. Um, we do do Form 477, full Form 477 submission underneath your FCC account. That's where we can actually, uh, we'll actually get your FCC ID, we'll actually log into the FCC's website, and we'll actually deliver the broadband subscription and the broadband subscriber data to the FCC for you. Um, however, you do need to contact us. It is uh, done on a time basis, depending on how accurate the data that you have. The broadband subscription data is very difficult to understand. Um, this is the census tracts of each subscriber, and most billing systems do an okay job of this, but we want to make sure that it is very, very important that you get the accurate data. Uh, make sure you get that accurate data. An example is uh, one customer was given a $26 million award uh, to a competitor because they did not accurately report their, their coverage, and now they're being overbilled by a competitor. So with that said, we do have some online documentations and how-tos. Uh, that is at wiki.towercoverage.com. Of course, you can always email us at support at towercoverage.com for any questions, queries, uh, or other informational tidbits that you need. Or you can give us a call. Uh, it's typically between 9 to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, 314-735-0270, uh, and just hit option 3 uh, for that. Now, with that said, that pretty much concludes my, my uh, presentation material, and I am going to uh, go back and uh, see what everybody is saying. If you have questions, please type it into our questions pane. We do need to get those questions uh, so that we uh, have those. All righty, let's see what kind of questions we got, and we can hopefully get some good answers. And again, you need to, uh, to type in all of your, your questions there so we can answer those. Um, one question is, uh, 365 LTE is our only option if trying to access cellular connections. It really depends. Um, it depends on the handset that you're using. Uh, most cellular services generally use between 900 to 1900. Uh, that does not exclude 365, but uh, many of them do. So, uh, and you'll have to get into a, an agreement with them. So, uh, if if there's that many customers, uh, I I really don't know on that. Um, the listed radio systems in the drop-down, are they generic or is that what is available in our area? Uh, that is really up to you. So going back to your radio systems, I apologize there. Going back to our radio systems, you can build radio systems. We do have a couple generic radio systems that we put in there just for... Uh, uh, posterity, but you can build your own radio systems, and the radio system really depends on what equipment you're using, all that kind of good stuff. So uh, your manufacturer should be able to help you with all those settings as well. Um, land cover density percentages are greater than 100%. How does that work? Um, the land cover is based off a range from 0 to 10,000. To be honest with you, the values that we have in there are probably accurate. Uh, I wouldn't. I have no reason to doubt that. However, if you do have lots of broadleaf, uh, or I'm sorry, needleleaf, you may update update that uh, a little much. But the big thing is, is that what what we do is we actually put up some clients. We actually get direct line of sight with no Fresnel zone issues or anything like that. And then we actually base our coverage based off that. Uh, so we actually take the actual received signal, and then we actually sit there and build a system uh, to where it works for that. That's usually what we do. Um, let's see here. Usually, though, the the 
the density percentages are usually between 300 to 600, depending on your region. Uh, EUS acronym, in user submission. So the EUS is the uh, system that we use to uh, have end users. So when I say end users, I say an end user is a user or a potential subscriber that you would normally have. So that's why we call it end user submission. Uh, the reliability settings is just a slider that increases or decreases the statistical probability of loss. Typically, 80 is a good number. If you want to be a little bit more conservative, you could cr crank that up to 90. If you wish to be less conservative, you can go down to 60. Uh, it is additional statistical loss based off of distance. So uh, please provide more examples on how to see coverages from an existing provider. Excellent question. Let me uh, get to that page. So I am going to go over to my uh, tower coverage account here. There we go. So inside, uh, if you go to tirecoverage.com, you actually have a number of different uh, pages here, as you can see. Uh, but one of them is our publicly viewable maps. And we have North American, Africa, Asia, Europe, Oceania, et cetera. And you can click on these. And this is where your publicly viewable maps actually come into uh, play. So by you making your map publicly viewable, we regenerate these about twice a day. It's actually a pretty long process to regenerate them, but the point being is that you can actually regenerate them, and then you can actually sit there and say, hey, we have coverage here, or we have coverage here, we have coverage here, etc. cetera. Uh, and then once you get in so far, it should uh, uh, reload for the actual coverage. There you go. So uh, that is the example of that. And notice we give you your phone number, your, your city and state, and your email address uh, on top of that. Um, you do not have to make your maps public. You can if you wish to, but you do not have to. Uh, that is totally up to you as well. Um, the question is, can we request tower coverage to find .ant for any specific manufacturer? We are currently not adding any more default antennas. My best recollection is to have your contact your antenna manufacturer and tell them that you need a .ant file uh, for, for use of that. So... Uh, I would definitely recommend that you do that. And then you could upload your .ant file to your page uh, as well. Um, can I enter radios and antennas for LTE uh, on the systems? I'm assuming that means the radio systems. Yes, you can. Uh, we do have LTE options. Uh, what web browsers work best? The, we we pretty, pretty much optimize for Google Chrome uh, as they have the most market share. Uh, however, if you send us examples to support at tirecoverage.com, we will try to modify those uh, accordingly. Let's see here. We have some other questions. So uh, this is a good one. Uh, when an EUS is submitted, how can you better narrow a search based on on our locations if the user does not have does not type a city or country? Um, the answer is we have to have a GPS, okay? Uh, otherwise, it won't work. So they have to type something in. Uh, but once we get that, we will submit that, and we will do path profiles for that. Um, keep in mind that we do base those off of the antenna beam width, your antenna distance. Uh, that way, if, if it's the example is if the link path is 12 miles out and your mileage setting on your coverage is 10, 
that would be excluded from that map. We would not show you that coverage. Uh, we actually, so whenever they submit the U.S., we actually process up to 200 of the most closest uh, coverage maps. Uh, so that's why, why it takes a minute. Because of that, uh, it usually takes about two to three minutes. But because of that, we actually are looking for the six best tower coverages uh, or the six best coverages. And these are the ways that we remove coverages from being uh, in that. One is distance. Two is your uh, uh, the actual RF signal. Three is the beam width filter. If they're outside your beam width, they will not show up. Uh, so another question. I am in Canada. Will EUS work in Canada? Yes, it will. It'll work anywhere in the world. Oh, let's see here. One que one person has said uh, most of our callers just mentioned their streets, like we know where they are. Um, just like if you were talking to them on the phone, you would have to get their city and state and zip code. Uh, if you're not inside the U.S., you would have to get more information than just a street because that's not good enough. So uh, you, you have to have GPS location for that to work. So uh, they said the link path profile, they noticed a difference between our link path profile and say and they're, they're going to use the Ubiquiti Air Link. Uh, of course, uh, we have been doing this for a really long time. We also take into account trees. Uh, we also take into account constructive and deconstructive Fresnel zones. So because of that, our link calculations typically will be very, very, uh, very, very accurate. So the question is, how do we collect tree and land cover information, and how accurate is it? Um, the tree and land cover data uh, comes from many different sources uh, globally. It really depends on where your area is. Um, if you actually go to your dashboard, uh, actually, I, I believe I don't know if it's in in our multi map on the production on our production site. It might be only on our beta site. <laughs> Yeah, it is only in our beta site. So in our in our beta site, we actually have a multi map. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And inside our multi map, we actually have a where is it? Okay, I don't know where it is. Uh, we we actually have a feature uh, in our new beta system that will display the oh I'm sorry it's only in coverages that's why so let me go back here so the the data that we collect is for each coverage so I'm just going to select a coverage here and this is called map data and this is actually a piece in our coverage. And you can select land cover here, and you can uh, change the opacity here. But this is the land cover for our area for the this particular map's area. Uh, this was generated whenever the map was created. Uh, we do use the most accurate data available. We go down to one third arc second data in most of the U.S. Uh, one arc second data pretty much everywhere else in the world, uh, as far as the terrain data and map data. Um, if I sit there and I change this to satellite view, so as you can see here, you know here's a field, and the green area is our map data, is our overlay, and it pretty much accurately reflects where that field is. Um, most of the time, our data is very accurate. Of course, it's not perfect. Uh, if we find better sources, or if you have better sources, please let us know. I mean, that's uh, all we can request is that uh, you know, if there's a new data source, we're more than uh, more than willing to uh, to update that. Um, so the, currently, there is the question is how do we upgrade to the latest version? Um, the latest version is at TireCoverage.com. Um, we do have a beta version, which is at beta.TireCoverage.com that everybody can use. Uh, we encourage everybody to report uh, errors and things like that. We do know certain things are broken on that. 
we do need to, uh, we are working on getting that uh, up and running, but this is not the production site. It actually uses the same database backend, so you, anybody can uh, use that if necessary. All right. Let me see what else we have here. Um, I mean, the data, so there is a, a question here. Thinking about providing, provided that through the FCC Form 77 data. Um, I don't really know what that means. Um, the Form 477 data, the broadband subscription data, is just that. It is where you potentially could cover within a reasonable time frame. Typically, anything in your coverage area, you can provide coverage within a reasonable time frame on. Therefore, we generate based off that data, we, we polygonize it, and then we compare it to the 22 million polygons that is in the broadband uh, census block data, and we give you those blocks. Um, the, another question, where do I associate land cover type with a coverage. Um, you do not associate land cover types. So again, going back to my original page here, you can view your land cover, but you cannot really uh, associate a land cover type. The land cover type is based off of uh, the land cover data that we have. Uh, he has left. Uh, view shed. So view shed simply modifies. So can we explain the view shed? Uh, by creating a new coverage, what a view shed does is it takes all of your trees, all of your land cover, and basically maxes out their density. Basically, think of it as a, a if you have trees that are 20 foot or, or 40 foot high, think of it as a RF wall. So what you would have is you would have a shadow behind that line of trees of uh, a view shed, and that is basically line of sight. Uh, do we take into consideration earth curvature, especially in long PDP? Yes, we do. Uh, let's see if I have one here. I'm pretty sure we do. Why? Well, let me rephrase this. I know we do. I'm just trying to think of uh, one that is long. Yeah, I mean, this is not a long link, but you can see that it, it actually has some curvature of the Earth. But yes, we do take into consideration uh, the terrain and the Earth curve. The channel mapping features. So how that works is you enter your center channel, and every 20 megahertz is a different color. So uh, every 20 megahertz should be a different color, and if you have colors that overlap uh, or the same colors that overlap, that could be possible interference. So can we import data from a CRM into the EUS? Yes, you can. There is a bulk upload feature that is on our Tier 5 accounts in, uh, uh, only. Uh, that is our unlimited account. That feature, you can do bulk uploads. It does use your API calls uh, to do so, but uh, you can do that uh, as well. And uh, you get 5,000 API calls a month for the uh, Tier 5, the unlimited account. Uh, if you need more, you can purchase more online for that if you need to bulk import that data. All righty. Uh, I am looking for any other questions, queries, or uh, other informational tidbits I can give you. Uh, one more question is, what is the meaning word of, of POP? POP is a point of presence, uh, typically a, uh, an access POP. So like you may have a, a tower that has uh, uh, your sectors on it that could be considered a POP location. It's, it's just a tower. It's just a site location. Um, can I talk about the tower, the link re reliability section? Basically, let's do a link here. 
So inside our link, this is our link reliability. So you can drop it to 50 or you can go up to 90. Typically 70 is a good number. Longer the link, more statistical loss it's going to add. Okay, this gives you the additional probability. So right now 70 is usually good, but if you went up to 90, this link could change. So like right now this link says it's a neg 50. So if we reprocess this link, uh, now it says it's neg 53, and that's for a five mile link. So 53.8, so almost four dB a gain. If we go to 50 and we reprocess, now we're at neg 44. This is typically the reliability that we wish to use based on that uh, uh, based on the uh, distance that you're using. Typically 70 is good uh, is a good number. Um, next question is, uh, we are uh, small, around 700 customers. What tier would you suggest? Well, the tier really depends on the number of coverages that you have. So the, big, the, the two big numbers are uh, the number of coverage maps and the number of API calls that you get per month. So if you had 700 customers, I'm assuming you probably have more than 100 sectors. I would hope anyway. Uh, but you may get by with 50. But you can upgrade and downgrade as you wish. Uh, our new site uh, is currently not running for uh, is not running for our new subscription system. But uh, if you have 24 sites, and how, so if you're saying you have 24 sites, how many sectors do you have? Do you have four sectors per site? Do you have three sectors per site? So three three sectors per site. So let me uh, find my calculator here so 20 what is it 24 sectors sorry I moved my moved my uh, my options times three sites so that's 72 so you need tier three at the minimum now is that only three sectors per site do you have more sectors per site you get unlimited unlimited path analysis unlimited uh, you get the Google Earth flyby on there uh, as well on a tier three Uh, Fernando has asked, do we include trees and obstructions? Yes, we do. We have been doing that since the, the system launched. We, we include system uh, uh, trees and obstructions. We have updated our data since, since we've launched, but uh, we can definitely uh, do that. That's definitely not a problem. All righty, last call for questions. Excellent. Well, we are right about an hour. I wanted to uh, tell everybody I appreciate them stopping by. If you have any questions, please, 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 please give us a call. We have our, uh, uh, I'm going to actually change this over to our PowerPoint again. Here we go. We do have our support option, 314-735-0270, hit option 3. Uh, that is open between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Central Time. However, you can always send us an email at support at towercoverage.com. Uh, we will be sending the, uh, we will be uh, issuing this vi uh, this video via email, or I'm sorry, not via email. It will be on our YouTube and it'll be on our wiki.towercoverage.com uh, as well. With that said, I appreciate everybody from uh, stopping by. I hope everybody has gained some new insight into towercoverage.com. And if you have any questions, please, please ask away. Uh, we definitely need that uh, as well. If you are going to use the beta site, if you see an error or something like that, please email us because we may not know about that error. So please do that as well. Again, wiki.towercoverage.com gives you all of our online documentation and how-tos as well. With that said, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and have a wonderful day.